mothers or your mother or you as a mother or just something you'd like to say. Uh, my mother's been gone to heaven about eight years now. And I'm telling you what, if she was still here, I'd, I'd stand up here and brag on her. I brag on her when she's not here. And uh, you better do it while you can. Anybody right quick just want to stand up and uh, say something for, to, or about uh, your mother, take this opportunity right, right quickly here this evening. Anybody right quick? Go ahead, Brother Randy. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anybody else? Go ahead, Ben. I just want to thank the Lord for saving me, but I want to thank the Lord for a good mom. Amen. Um, I remember when I was like five and we lived in Kenya, South Carolina, and we were just living in the country. We lived in a small industrial area. Amen. 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 Yeah, you got a good mom. Miss Janet's a good woman. Go ahead, Miss Donna. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Want to brag on mama? Say something, do something? If it's on your heart, let's do it. Anybody? Go ahead, sister. Yeah, yeah. Right. Amen. 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 Got you a new flower garden this morning, I see that, didn't you? Amen. Anybody else? Right quick. Amen, brother.
Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Got a good mama. Thank you, brother. Anybody else? Go ahead, Brother Terry. Yeah. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. 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 Anybody else? And I'm, I'm going to read some scripture and preach a little bit, and then I'm going to have Malachi on you to get you a song ready for me in a little bit. Any, anybody else? Right quick. I'm going to brag on the Lord. Go ahead, DJ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord done something for that girl to youth rally, y'all. She's been in church ever since. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, y'all wouldn't believe, if you wasn't here Wednesday night, you wouldn't believe the text and the emails and the letters that we've got. I mean, Phil Kidd sent me some that people sent him. Just some woman I'd, I'd, uh, 50 years old had watched the youth rally and started bawling her eyes out and got down and got saved. And there's testimonies like that. Go ahead, Miss Desi. Amen. Good. Praise the Lord. That's a good testimony. Amen. They know you're going to church. They'll scoot out. Anybody else? Go ahead, our young fella. Amen, brother. Isn't that good? What about that? Go ahead, Drew. That's right. And my mom come to me and, and, and she said that she got to the house and she said she was dying of blood pressure. And she wanted to come out and sign a will. And I'm like, Mom, you're not dying. She said, if you would fix my will, you can read it. And she said, she passed away. Mm. Amen. Amen, brother. God bless you. Anybody else? All right. Go ahead there, young fella. Uh-huh. Yeah. Amen. Amen, brother. That's right. Amen. Praise God. That's wonderful. That's right. Amen. That's good, brother. Mm. That's 
That's right, brother. Amen. 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 That's right. That's right. Amen. All right. Let's get our Bibles open now. Take your Bible. Turn to Acts chapter 16. I, I was um, running the other day. You, I know you don't believe that. Some of the, I think some profound thoughts running many times. And this thought came on my mind. I was thinking about this verse of scripture and just right up the road, I was thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went, I went to the house and wrote it down and I want to give it to you this evening. A little thought here. Acts chapter 16 is the wonderful, well-known, everybody knows the story, the Philippian jailer getting saved and the famous scripture in verse 31 where Paul told him uh, how to get saved. But we'll look at verse number 29 tonight and see where the Philippian jailer, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, jailer come in and he called for a light, verse 29, and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. Look at verse 30. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Now, the... I want to use that question. This is what came to my mind the other day running. That question. He said, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? Now, I want to leave off uh, the last three words of that and preach on what must I do? Or what must I do to be? And I want to cha- add some to that last word. Number one, what must I do to be saved? Well, they gave the right answer here. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Being good does not make a person saved. Uh, uh, All of us know people that are morally upright, good, well-known in the community, pay their just and honest debts, good to their family, so forth, so on but are not saved. Being religious surely does not make a person saved. Uh, Doing good works and helping with charities. I think a lot of them people in Hollywood start feeling guilty and they, so they give money away. They think maybe, maybe God will get off my back or won't kill me if I, if I do something good or they'll adopt a child from another country or, or something to prove that they are really deep down a good person. That does not save you uh, of doing good, of charity. I think that uh, the, the, the world and the devil has all kinds of substitutes for church so people don't have to get right with God, but yet they still feel like they're good people. All these clubs and, and uh, uh, you know, things like, like the Moose Law, the club, and the, the Elks, and the Ruitan, and the Civitan Club, and Masons, and, and all of these things, and some of those have done some good, and I thank the Lord for that. But I think some of that is just a substitute uh, because people are in, inherently religious. And people inherently like to get together and have a cause. People do. We're just, we're made that way. You can go to any country in the world and people congregate for something. They like to be around, if it's a softball team, if it's a, a women's group, if it's a hiking group, if it's Boy Scout, people like to get together and be a part of a group. And all that is, is a substitute and it is met when you get saved and go to church. I'm so glad tonight that I got saved. I'm not just saying that. Thank God I got saved. I heard about, I heard about, I thought about this week uh, when uh, they, I listened to the, the, uh, the conference hour every day on 780 AM. Y'all want to listen to some preaching now? Turn on there and you'll hear some, hear some preaching. I'm not teaching, having it in ears. Preaching. Authoritative Bible preaching. That's what this world's starving for. And that's what you need. Uh, every day, I and you both, you need a preacher just sort of 
smack you around a little bit and keep you in line. That's the easiest form of chastisement there is, is getting smacked with the word of God just a little bit. And uh, I listened to it this week and they had on there Joe Parson. Uncle Joe Parson preached the revival that I got saved in. And he was one of them old men that got up at four o'clock in the morning, prayed two hours, you know, and everything. And when Joe came to Nebo, I remember God came with him. I'm telling you, I was 18 years old. I had that little old MG car. You've heard me tell about it. And me and these boys were down to school, behind Nebo School, shooting basketball. And we'd put speakers up on the back of that little car. He'd take the top down. And I'd put speakers on and put our music in there and play it. And we'd play ball over here and listen to our, to our tapes, eight-track tapes. I mean, we're talking last century, brother. Uh, and uh, and uh, we, we, uh, we'd shoot basketball. And there was a group over there on the swings and slides and stuff. And I said, Who, who's them people? And it was a group that came down from Appalachian State University, a group of, of young people that got right with the Lord. And they were helping in that revival. And some began to tug on my heart. And my cousin, who worked at the store there, right in the middle of Nebo, right at the bottom of the hill, the church I got saved in, me and my cousin, my other cousin, walked in the store. She said, Danny, I want you boys to come to our revival. We're having a revival. And I said, well, thanks, thanks, Jackie. That was Linda Hawk's sister, uh, my, my cousin Jackie. And ja I said, thanks, Jackie. I appreciate that. And it, it made me feel nervous. I, I felt nervous when I seen them weirdos down there at the school. Uh, and I, I, I was swinging on them swings, you know. And I, I felt nervous when she invited me to church. And then about the next day, which I think was on, on uh, Sunday, somebody told me, they said, so-and-so got saved, Kenneth a boy that played ball with us. And when they said he got saved, there was a dart went ding and stuck in my chest. It was conviction. I was under conviction. And my mom, like y'all's mom you told about, had preached to me my whole life. Told me, and I got under conviction. And I had already been, I didn't know it, but I had already been feeling empty. I remember we'd play ball from daylight to dark and, and just go run around, you know. And I, I never done no drugs. I've never been drunk. I've never been high. I've never done nothing like that. But I, we sinned. I mean, we got into sin. And I remember feeling empty. And I remember one time I thought, is, is this life? I mean, I mean, is, is this all there is? Is just eat and drink and play and sleep? I, I remember thinking that just a time or two. And I remember thinking about going to hell a couple of times. And I remember thinking, I'm gonna wreck this little car and I'm gonna die and go to hell. I remember thinking that. Uh, but when they told me that boy got saved, it was like, ding, a dart went in my heart. And I told my cousin, my other cousin, I said, let's go up out of that revival. And you know, you've heard my testimony. I'm not gonna give the whole thing tonight. But me and him went on Tuesday night. We walked in there outside, peeped in the back window, and that place was packed. And there was everybody was standing up singing. And I said, I'm not going in there. And I, the devil won the victory. I looked in that window, seen all them people in there. I said, I'm not going in. We got in the car and left. And I know the devil went, jumped up and down, went, yeah. I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him. And we came back the next night, which was on Wednesday, uh, mid-April, April 18th, 19th. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago, my, it was my spiritual birthday. And we walked in there that Wednesday night. That night, uh, me, him, uh, th three or four of us uh, went in there that night, sat down back there in the back, uh, near the back on this side. Uh, that group that I was laughing at down at the school, got up and started singing. Old Joe Parson, the old man of God, I keep his picture over there on my desk. I look at it on Sunday morning before I go out to preach. I say, oh, oh, Brother Joe, I hope I, I hope you make, make you a little bit proud of me. I'll do my best uh, to tell people, keep people in the old time way and in the old time faith and the old time straightness of the word of God. And boy, I tell you, I sat down there that night. Old Joe was up here like this. The pastor was over here. And all of a sudden, something hit that church like I'd never felt before in my life. I thought my heart was gonna jump out of my chest. You know what I'm talking about. You remember what happened to you? And people started going to the altar, going to the altar, going. I thought, oh my, I, 
I'm, I thought I am trapped. I felt like a, a squirrel up a tree uh, with a bunch of dogs down there barking at That's the way it felt. I felt like the whole world was staring at me. About that time, this girl from school turned around and she said, Danny, why don't you go get saved? And I said, uh, I, I, it ain't my time to get saved. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know, I didn't know what I was talking about. I thought, maybe when it's your time, to, you'll hear angels play on harps. You'll hear a voice say, Danny Castle, come up hither. Uh, I, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it meant. And buddy, I, my heart going boom, 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 boom. Then my cousin, Mike, he turned around to me and he said, hey man, let's go get saved. I said, I ain't ready. I ain't ready. I ain't ready. I stood there. I looked this way. I looked. It seemed like eternity. I stood there and about that time, I can't explain it. I wish I could. I, when I think about it, uh, something gets inside in my soul. About that time, it's just like something broke. It was like something broke on the inside. I punched him, I said, let's go. And he took off, I took off, I fell down. There were so many people in the altar, you couldn't get to the altar. I fell down about right here. I didn't, I didn't go up there and grin and pop bubble gum and said, now what do I do? I didn't go up there and look around, you know, and just kneel on one knee. I fell down on my belly. I laid like a ball like a baby. I mean, I cried. I, I, and it was, it was mid-April and we was all sunburnt. It was out of school for spring break that week. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you, it was, I bawled my eyes out and about 45 minutes later, uh, somebody stuck a Bible in front of me and said, I don't even know what they said, but I know one thing. I got up that night and I, I, something had happened to me and they started hugging necks and I, I was saved before I knew what was going on. And I said, well, I've got saved. I've, I've done and got saved. And I sat down right there on the front row, right here, like where Jeremy is. Didn't go back there. And that old preacher got up that night and that place was packed. And he looked right at me and he pointed his finger at me and said, did you get everything straight, young man? I said, yes, sir. I didn't know if I did or not. I didn't know what I, I, didn't know what I was doing. I said, yes, sir. And I'm telling you, that night I got saved. What must I do to get saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, hallelujah, he lifted me out. I couldn't get out by myself. He lifted me out. I couldn't go to where he was. He came to where I was and pulled me out of a horrible pit. I couldn't change like I changed without the Lord doing it for me. I'm glad I got saved, amen. I got saved. Listen, I ain't been perfect. But I'll tell you one thing, brother. I ain't never been the same since that night till this night here tonight. Woo, hallelujah. I'm glad I got saved. What must I do to be saved? Second, here's why I changed it just a little bit. What must I do to be separated? What must I do to be separated? Now, we understand the Bible said, when you get saved, the Lord said, come out from among them and be ye what? Somebody tell me. Separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Amen, I'll receive you. I found that out right after I got saved. And I thought, what must I do to be separated? All I'd done to get saved was call on the Lord and believe on him. That's it. As a matter of fact, you don't get saved by calling. You get saved by believing. And it's okay to call on him. It's okay to cry. It's okay to squall and bawl your eyes out. But that ain't what saves you. Believing on Christ Jesus and what he did is what saves you. That's what I did, got saved. And what must I do to be separated? Now, this is a little bit different. All right, it'd be like this right here. Let's just say all these are my friends right here. Now, I just got saved uh, last night. The next day, here's all my friends. Here's my, my drinking buddies. Here's my drug dealers. Uh, here's the, don't let them fool you, that little old church lady look. Uh, they, got, they got meth out there in the car. Uh, but, uh, here, here's my drug, and, and, and right here's my supplier, right here. Uh, and uh, uh, right, uh, here, here's my buddies. Now the Lord said, come out among them and be you separate. I, I've got to realize I can't hang around them no more. I'm, I'm not no better than they are, but I can't go like me and them was going. Uh, I can't go where we used to go. I can't do what we used to do. You call it self-righteous, call it whatever you want to, but God said for us to come out and separate ourselves from this world. What I, I, I had a man tell me the other day. He said, now, he said, now, uh, you got to remember, Danny, that Jesus was in the midst. 
Jesus was in the midst. And he sort they, they're trying to make it sound like Jesus, quote, hung out. With, with a bunch of uh, harlots and drunks and, and stuff like that. Now he went to them. The Lord went to them and he witnessed to them. Like, like Joey was saying, he goes to them, he witnesses to them, but Jesus didn't, quote, hang out uh, with sinners. He was there as a separate as a separate man, he never went down there and said, well, let's, hey, let's have a beer together uh, like they do nowadays, like Justin Bieber's pastor. He didn't, he didn't say, he didn't come down there and say, all right, let's shoot pool and I'll gamble, you know, and let's do them cuss and put a dollar in the jukebox. He didn't do that. He went down there and he said, uh, I came to die for you. I came to give my life for you. He went down there to preach to them. And that's what we need to learn how to do. I'm gonna tell you something, people. Uh, what must I do to be separated? You gotta come out. You gotta come out. You got to come out. You want God to bless you? Touch not the unclean thing. Amen. Touch not the unclean thing. Immediately, immediately, I started feeling guilty about uh, watching movies uh, that I shouldn't watch. I'd be honest with you, I lost all interest in it. I, I just lost interest in I, 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 I remember thinking things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have allured my sight. I will hasten to him. I always think about that. And I think, it ain't like, Oh no, I'm saved. I can't go to the movies. Oh no, I'm saved. I can't. It, it's not like that. If, if that's the way you look at it, you look at it wrong. It's things that are higher, things that are nobler. These have allured my sight. It's like you get a glimpse of something bigger, something better, something more glorious. You think, oh my goodness, I don't mind leaving that behind. I see something better. I see something higher. I see something nobler. I'll tell you what happened today. Uh, you know, y'all have heard me tell, I used to play in a band when I was 12, 13 years old. And uh, when I, uh, Luca there, he started a lot younger than me. I started one of these when I was about, I think 11 or 12. Daddy bought me a guitar and I wore the end of my fingers out trying to learn how to play that thing. And I'm glad I started playing basketball because if I hadn't have started playing basketball, I'd have wound up playing in that band and got into trouble. The older boys in our band, they were 17 and 18, and me and the drummer were 13, and they were already doing bad stuff. They brought their girlfriends to practice, and all I done was want to play the music. I just enjoyed the music. I didn't have a girlfriend, and, and I, I, but I liked to play that music. And uh, we went down there, that Arthur Smith recording studio down there in Charlotte, and recorded that record that we made. And I remember playing that music, you know, and everything. I thought, that's what I want to do. Some of y'all have never heard of Arthur Smith. That was last generation. I, I think he's dead then, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, we went down there, and long story short, I, I loved it to play that music, and I wanted to. And we had a few gigs here and there, you know. Uh, we'd play over at the Lake Club and, and even up Nebo, and, and daddy, my daddy get us up to Moose Lodge or somewhere, and we'd play at the high school dance when I, where I went to school at Nebo, uh, and the, the high, all the high school would come in there, and we'd play for the dance, you know, and everybody thought we was cool because we was in the band, uh, you know. And, uh, and when I got saved, uh, I gradually started changing, and that's why this music thing is such a big deal with me. Because I've always been able to, I don't just hear music, I feel it. And I feel it. And there's a spirit that comes along with music. And if you don't understand that, I'm, I envy you, really. I, 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 you, you, ought, you ought to be glad. Uh, but you ought to listen to somebody that does, though. And I remember playing that music and stuff, and I started feeling a little bit weird. And I started feeling a little bit strange. Actually, today... We took Kelly to eat out for Mother's Day, and uh, I, I, we took her there and got some fish, sat down in the restaurant, and they, they had some old music, some of that old 60s music on there, and it was like, I want to hear some of that rock and rolling music, any old way you choose it. Remember that old song? It's got a backbeat, you can't lose it, any old way you choose it. Got to be rock and roll music if you want to dance with me. Ta -ta -ta. Remember that? Y'all don't know that song? That's 100 years old. How many of you ever heard that? Raise your hand. Okay. Uh, uh, and I'm telling you, I was sitting there, and it got in me. Today, after I just stood and prophesied over all these mothers, and it got in me, and I was like, it's got a backbeat, you can't lose it, any old way you choose it. And the devil said, 
Sounds pretty good, don't it, Danny? I said, yeah, it does. And he said, your flesh likes that, don't it? And I said, yeah, sure does. And he said, wouldn't you like to go back to that? I said, no, no. The flesh does, that is appealing to the flesh. I don't want to go back to them old days. The emptiness, the jealousy among the band members, the fussing and fighting, the stiff teachers that I saw drunk dancing with somebody else's wife. My daddy swerving all over the road and I'd reach over and grab the steering wheel so we wouldn't wreck when he'd come home so drunk couldn't hold a truck in the road. I don't want to go back to that. I don't want to go back to that. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have a Lord in my sight. The devil's got candy. He's got some stuff that tastes good. He's got some thrills for your flesh. But that old life ain't no good, people. Leave it out. Get away from that stuff. Let that crowd of parties alone. Don't go to the beach with a bunch of girls that ain't living right. Don't go off on a trail with a bunch of guys at the bar on Friday night. Separate yourself. What must I do to be separated? Separated. When I first got saved, there's a bunch of people thought they could still do that and stay right with God. Can't. They kept long hair. They went to church other places where you could do that. And they'd sit and cross their legs. Everybody wore bell bottom blue jeans and them guys and they and they they, they started this stuff like this weird music. It's hippie music. A lot of this stuff in the mega churches now, all it is is hippie music from the 60s. Same thing. Same spirit, same atmosphere. And they're saying, oh, kumbaya, you know, or something like that, you know, and, and, and love and love. All we need is love. All we need is love. And uh, you know what? I call them hypocrites. Uh, they, kept, they kept their hair long. Uh, they still smoked pot. Uh, they thought you could still uh, rock and roll a little bit and, and still stay right with God. I said, no, no, no. Uh, listen, I, I'm glad I got under some old-fashioned preaching. And them old men of God got out and said, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. I'm gonna tell you something tonight. I thank God that I got to sit and listen to a man of God take the word of God and just, beat me over the head with it and straighten me out and get me out of that mess that I was in. Thank God. You ought to, you ought to appreciate any preacher that helps you stay straight. You want to stay separate? i send you a good Tony Hudson sermon to listen to this week. Somebody like, a, like Dr. Kidd. And I'm not, saying, I'm not saying you can't get something out of the soft preacher. You, you can. You can. But you need that hard stuff. You need that hard stuff to smack you in line, buddy. It'll smack you right in the line. It'll make you live right and make you turn from sin and help you straight. Keep you, keep you a good Lester Roloff message on or one of them guys on, on your phone and listen to it every day. Listen, what must I do to be separate? Come out from among them. Quickly, number three, I thought this. What must I do to be schooled? What must I do to be schooled? I wanted to learn. You've heard me tell that story before. Listen, all you young people. I was 18, not much older than some of you here tonight. How old are you, Malachi? 17, one year older than him. I got saved in April. I got a hunger for the word of God. You've heard me tell it many times before. I said, I'm gonna read this thing and I'm gonna understand this if it kills me. I'd never been to Bible college, still ain't. I'm not bragging about that. I, I'm, I'm not against it. If you go the right kind, that teaches the Bible's true. There ain't many of them. Uh, but I, I'm telling you, I, I don't have much use for a Bible college that don't even believe the Bible. If you go to the Bible college, you ought to learn the Bible, Amen. If I got five different ones, what, what have you learned? You've learned none of them ain't the word of God. Now I'm gonna tell you, I'll get off on that in a minute. I'm, 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 I'm gonna tell you tonight, listen, I, I, I said, I'm gonna learn this book. I'm gonna learn the book, so I got in it. I read Genesis 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Read all the Genesis 50, Gen Exodus 40, Leviticus 27, uh, Numbers, uh, all, the way, all the way through the book of Numbers, all the way through there, and, uh, and I began to read that in Deuteronomy, and then I got over into, into Judges and Joshua, and, and I got into First Chronicles. I got up one morning, I was 18 years old. It was about this time of year, actually it was about July, I think, and here's what I done. 
I read, I made myself pronounce every word of it, even if I couldn't say, I tried to say every syllable. I still do that, by the way. I still do it to this day. I try to say every syllable in the Bible. And I read every one of them. I'd read like, and if thy people Israel be put to the worst before the enemy because they have sinned against thee and shall return and confess thy name and pray in supplication before thee in this house, then hear thou from heaven. I just opened it up. And this is where it was. That there is no rain because they have sinned against thee. Yet if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou dost afflict them. Man, I read that and I read it. I started reading at nine o'clock in the morning, read till about 12 o'clock. Mom come in there and said, Danny, I'll give you some money. You'll go up to the Harvest Drive-In in Marion, still there today, and said, uh, if you'll get us some food, chicken or something, bring it home and we'll eat. I said, okay. I jumped in the car, went up there and got some chicken and brought it back and we ate. I started reading the Bible again about two o'clock and I read till three o'clock. I read till four o'clock. I read till five o'clock. I said, I'm gonna visit some of my friends and we was gonna go over to somebody's house shoot basketball or something. I left for a few hours, come back at nine o'clock that night and start reading again. And I read First Chronicles, Second Chronicles. I read 120 chapters in my Bible that day, y'all. I was 18 years old. You say, did you understand it? No. Uh, did you say get a lot? No, I, I didn't know what in the world I was doing. I, I, I didn't know where I was, heads or tails, brother. I didn't know nothing about what I said. I'm going to read this thing. I'm going to understand this. I'm going to get this thing figured out uh, because I'm saved now and I want to figure out what this book's talking about. And at about nine o'clock that night, you listen to me? Nine o'clock that night, I was sitting at a desk. We didn't have air conditioning, so I had the window open. It was a warm summer day. I was at my mom's house there in, in Hoppy Tom, and I had the window open like this, and the sky got dark, and it come a big old storm that night, and the lightning was flashing, and thunder was boom, like that, and I had my Bible laying there, and all of a sudden, I mean, just like, it was just like a breeze come in that window. I'm telling you people, uh, there was something got a hold of me and said, hey boy, they said, you, you see that wind out there blowing them trees? You see that sky lighting up out there? I said, yes, sir, I do. He said, the same God uh, that's uh, making them trees move, same God that's making that lightning flash in that sky is the God that wrote them words on them pages. You, I'm telling you, something bubbled up in my soul. I said, glory to God, hallelujah. I know the God of the Bible. I know the God of creation. I know the God of the universe. And I said, woo! And I understood what it means to be schooled. Yeah. Teach it. Get in your Bible, people. Turn that phone off a while and get in your Bible. Amen. 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 Read that thing. I learned why we believe the King James Bible. Beware. I do listen to preachers sometimes that don't believe, they say some good things and all that. You better beware, you better beware hanging around that crowd because the first thing you know, you'll start with saying, well, I really like him. I really like them. And you'll let your lack of them override your judgment of what's right. I like a lot of people that believe wrong. I do, I've got friends uh, that believe wrong. But I'm telling you one thing, brother, when it comes right down to it, I'm gonna stick with what this right here says. Amen. I'm gonna stick with what this book says and this book has been, has been proved by the fruits on the mission field when somebody says, oh, well, you make too big of a deal out of that King James issue. Here's so-and-so, and they do a great work, and they don't believe it. Well, just think what they could do if they did. And they believe the wrong Greek manuscripts that come from the Catholic Alexandria manuscripts and in uh, Alexandria, Egypt, a type of the world. This book comes from Antioch of Syria, where the disciples were first called Christians, and the book that God blesses all over this world is this book and translations in other languages from the same manuscripts. You better learn that. You better learn that. I don't want a Bible that leaves out the virgin birth in Luke 2.33. I don't care how nice a man is. I don't want a Bible that leaves the blood out of Colossians chapter 1. 
I don't want a Bible that says uh, Joseph was Jesus' father in Luke 2.33. I'm telling you, I like friends as much as anybody. I don't want a Bible like that. Amen. Amen. School. You're in school. Learn what you believe and why you believe it. Learn about the blood of Jesus. Learn. I, I was supposed to preach revival at a church <laughs> in August. And somebody called me the other day and said, the Pastor call you? And I said, no. He said, well, he's going to. They run him off. And I said, oh, sorry to hear that. And it was about the blood. He had preached a sermon about the blood, that little M.R. Hans book, you know, about the blood, chemistry of the blood. And it talks about your blood comes from your daddy and that Jesus had God's blood inside him. You've, you've heard that preached and preached and preached. And some of the uh, ladies in the church got mad at him because they said, no, a woman gives her blood to the child, which there's a, there's a part of it. I mean, it's blood, of course. But uh, uh, they say the, the blood actually comes from the daddy, and they got mad and run the preacher off over it. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, I, I want you, you need to understand what the Bible teaches about the blood. You need to understand what the Bible teaches about creation. It don't, it don't teach we've been here for millions of years and evolved into what we are today. The Bible said in the beginning, God made them male and female, made a grown man. Adam didn't start down here. Well, somebody said the other day, they said, well, I believe in, in creation. I just believe God used evolution to create. No, no, no. You cannot believe that and believe the Bible. Jesus was a creationist and Moses was a creationist and their creation, a grown man, Adam, in one spirit split minute. God made him from the dust of the earth. You better learn what you believe about the Sabbath. You better know why we go to church on Sunday and every other day of the week. I, we've got friends. we got friends. Ethan's got friends uh, that, that give him down the road and say we're terrible because we go to church on Sunday. And uh, because they believe uh, that you're supposed to go to church on the Sabbath, which is Saturday, and it is. You say, well, why don't we go to church on Sunday? There you go. You need to be schooled. You need to be schooled. The Old Testament Sabbath was a sign between God and Israel. Over and over and over, he said, I gave this sign to Israel. It's a covenant that God made with Israel. That Sabbath day, uh, we, we, God, God created the world in six days. He rested the seventh, a picture of that. But Jesus Christ rose from the day of the first day of the week. The Holy Ghost came down the first day of the week, day of Pentecost. The disciples met and preached on the first day of the week on Sunday. They said, well, you're, you're, you're sinning because you don't go to church. Guess what? I went to church yesterday and preached last night, so I'm covered either way. Uh, but listen, we'll go to church seven days a week if we want to and worship God any time we want to. You better be schooled. You know, you need to know the difference between Jew, Gentile, and church. Uh, you know, if, if a person is a Jew of Jewish descent, anybody who's not a Jew is a Gentile, and anybody who's saved is neither Jew nor Gentile, you're a Christian. You are a Christian in the body of Christ. You know what that is? That's sound doctrine. You need, what must I do to be schooled? Get your nose in the book, get you some preaching, and listen to it. Please, y'all, don't just listen to preaching that makes you feel good about coping with your third child's nose being blowed. Now, look, we need some of that. We need some of that. But the whole blessed world don't evolve around you and your feelings and your kids and your husband and your feelings and your kids and your husband. That's what everybody's eating up nowadays. Make me feel better. I want to be, tell me I'm all right. Tell me I'm all right. Tell me I'm all right. Just tell me I'm all right. Let's do this. Let's preach this book and get busy helping somebody else and winning somebody the Lord and not worry about ourselves so much. In the last days, men shall be lovers of their own selves, having itching ears. Tell me I'm good. Tell me I'm all right. Tell, I'm not against counseling. I believe in it. I'm not against preaching on the home and relationships. I believe in it. But 90% of that book ain't about that. The book's theme is a king and a kingdom. And Christ's gonna rule this thing one of these days. Amen. Here's what you do. Here's what I did. You know how I learned the Bible? I'd preach a revival up in Spruce Pine. And it's better, easier to do this now. I got me a set of tapes. Cassettes had came out by the end. And uh, I, I, y'all better shut up. 
You keep laughing. Keep laughing. I'll be, writ- I'll be coming to visit y'all and rest on one of these days. And holding your hand while you drool on yourself. You make fun of me. Listen. I'd have to preach up in Burnsville. An hour drive from home. I got a set of tapes by a great preacher. I'd listen to one going and nothing coming. One going, nothing coming. An hour up there, an hour back. Didn't have a phone. Didn't want to hear the radio. I wanted to hear the Bible. And that's how I learned the Word of God. Listen to somebody else that knows it. If I want to grow corn, I'm on a man to talk to me that's got some corn in his garden and knows what he's talking about. When I want to learn that Bible, I want a man to tell me what the Bible says. What the Bible said. When you hear a preacher, you listen to him real carefully and see how much Bible doctrine he gives you. You listen to me? Hey, what must I do to be schooled? You ought to know the future. You ought to know the difference. You ought to know what the filling of the Holy Spirit is. You ought to know what we believe about the gifts of the Spirit. And that even though God don't change, there are no apostles in our day and time that we live in that were Jesus gave the commission to and sent them out to preach. And therefore, the sign gifts uh, you're, you're not an apostle. You don't have the sign gifts. I didn't say God don't work miracles. I didn't say God couldn't make me speak Chinese right now. He could. Right, but I'm telling you this. You, you are not an apostle. Don't go around everywhere you go laying hands on everybody trying to heal them and raise them from the dead. You ain't going to do that. God does heal. God can raise somebody from the dead. But if you don't learn your Bible right, you're going to make a complete fool out of yourself. And that's what a lot of people are doing. What must I do to be schooled? Number four, and I'm done. What must I do to be a soul winner? What must I do to be a soul winner, Lord? What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What must I do to be separated? Get away from crazy people. That's right. Best advice I can give you, get away from crazy people. He that walketh with crazy people shall be crazy. Everybody's writing their own version. That's my version. Here's the real one. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. That's lofty right there. That's lofty high English right there, brother. Hey, what must I do to be a soul winner? Now, here's what you got to do to be a soul winner. Proverbs 11.30. I've heard people say, well, I just don't have the gift of soul winning. No such thing. There ain't no such thing as gift of soul winning. You want me to tell you what soul winning is? It's a command of God. It ain't got nothing to do with a gift you got. It's got something to do with you're going to obey him or disobey him. Amen. 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 If I tell my kid to take out the trash, he don't have to feel led. If I tell my kid to uh, work in the yard, I told Ethan, I said, well, I'm gone. Get some weed eating done. He did. And and that's good. He didn't have to say, well, I, I prayed about it, Brother Danny, and I didn't feel led. I said, well, you better feel led tomorrow evening uh, uh, or, or you're going to be in trouble. That's right. You don't have to feel led to do what God told you to do. Listen, if the building next door is burning down and people are dying in there, you don't have to feel led to go help pull somebody out. What must I do to be a soul winner? All right, three things, I'm done. Be available. You want to be a soul winner? Be available. Say, here am I, Lord, send me. It don't matter about me. That's why we preach the buses. That's why I preach on the bus ministry. Did you know there ain't hardly no churches got bus ministries no more? Did you know most churches are just giving it up? It's too much money. Nobody cares about the kids. And, and, they, and they, it's, it's a high risk. You can be sued. You can get in all kinds of trouble. And, very, and people just say, heck with it. And they won't come to church. All right, if they don't. But I, I just can't do that. I, I just can't do it. As long as we can do it, and as long as God gives us the money to do it, and as long as God gives us uh, the buses that'll roll, we're 
we're gonna run them by the grace of God till they pass laws against it and stop us. And that very well may come. I just can't stand the thoughts of it. I just can't, listen, those little old boys and girls, God loves that little kid out there just as much as he loves as you love your kid, as I love my kid. Now, listen, if that was one of my grandkids down yonder in one of them trailer parks over in them apartments, you know what, I'd say please. I, if I was in heaven, I'd say please, will y'all go get them? Please, will y'all go get them? Please, listen people, not many people's doing it anymore. Make yourself available. Make yourself available. Drive a bus, go knock on some doors, grab you a handful of tracks back there and just go out witness and witness at work, witness at Walmart, witness at school, witness on the job, wherever God puts you in. Be a sower, try to win some by the Lord. I wanna challenge everybody in here this, this week, this, this tonight. Everybody in here try to win a soul personally to the Lord sometime this spring or summer. Wouldn't that, do you think God would be pleased with that? Yes, sir. Let's be available. Here's what I want you to do. Say, Lord, I'm available. You put somebody in my path, I went, like I told you about that little boy, uh, I led to the Lord over to the gym one day. I was over there shooting free throws and when I go in there by myself, I try to see how many I can get out of 100 and I go for 90 uh, at least out of 100 and I was over there just I hitting them like that and there was a boy about 14 years old. He come over to me and said, where'd you learn how to shoot like that? And I said, by doing this. And I said, what's your name? And he told me his name. He's 14 years old. And I began to talk to him and the Lord said, you know what this is, don't you? This opportunity to witness. And just me and him in there, I said, you go to church anywhere? He said, well, I go with my aunt down when we go to Charlotte and my grandma lives down there and I go to church down there. And I said, let's sit down here and talk a minute. And me and him sat down there and talked. And I said, and I, there was nobody else in there. And I got to show him the plan of salvation and lead him to the Lord right there in that gym. And I prayed with him. I said, if you ask Jesus to come in your heart, he said, yes, I will. Will you trust the Lord to save you? He said, yes, I will. Man, I left there on cloud nine. I wouldn't have felt that good if I'd hit 100 out of 100. That's right, and I ain't never hit 100 out of 100. I wouldn't have felt that. I thought, glory to God, hallelujah. See, if you're fishing, if you're, if you're fishing, if you're fishing, listen, people, you can't keep fishing and not catch something sooner or later. You know what's wrong with a lot of people? They don't fish. Get you some tracks on the way out of here. Talk to somebody. Talk, stop to see that homeless man sitting there on the side of the road. If, give him a dollar and then witness to him about his soul. Tell him about the Lord. I, I, I want to challenge somebody in here tonight. Night. That that relative that you've got that you've never witnessed to and God's been dealing with you for a long time, do it this summer. Amen. Set you a time and do it. If you keep putting it off, you're gonna find out they're gone one of these days. Not only be available, be ready. Be ready. Let's take your Bible and turn to Matthew 18. I'll show you one verse, tell you a couple things and I'm done. Matthew chapter number 18. Look at verse, this verse jumped out at me this week, as they, they often do, and look at verse number five. Matthew 18 and verse number five. It says here, and whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. What about that? Bus workers, every kid that you talk to, if you're there to talk about the Lord Jesus Christ and you love them for Jesus Christ's sake, you know what the Lord says? You're doing this to me. You, the way you treat them is the way you're treating me. Lord have mercy. Listen, if Jesus come in here next Sunday morning, everybody be, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, is there anything I can do for you, Lord? How are you gonna do this? Lord? He said, you treat them kids just like you'd treat me if I walked in there. Don't have me say, oh my goodness, why they bring them brats in here? They don't listen, they don't get nothing. I feel sorry for you if that's your attitude. If you're that self-centered and cold and backslid on God, I feel sorry for you. You better realize them little boys and girls are going to hell one day if they don't get saved. And this church may be the only light they ever see that points them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Years ago down here in Statesville, I used to preach down at our church. Um, pastor, he finally passed away, and I don't even know who's pastor in there now, but I used, he used to have me down there and I preach revival about every year. 
and they had a soul winning church and the pastor's wife went visiting every week, a lot of the ladies in the church. You see, it shouldn't be just the new people that does everything. What about some of you that's been here for a while? They look at you and say, well, they don't. I've had them tell me that. What about so-and-so? She don't. What about so-and-so? He don't. And that's on y'all. It's on y'all. It ain't on me. I try to take up for you the best I can. And this girl, th this lady, she was probably up in her 50s, and they called her Miss May. And Miss May had had a stroke, and her, her, her face was drawn this way. She couldn't talk. It was bad. And her, her, she, couldn't say, she hadn't spoke a word in 15 years. Not one word in 15 years. They had to feed her like with a tube. It was like soup and stuff. 15 years, she had not ate one bite normal or said one word. And she never missed a service. She sat right here, and her head was cocked over sideways like that right there. She looked, oh, I, don't, I don't mean it bad, but scary in a way just to, to look at her. And she went visiting every, Saturday, every Thursday with the pastor's wife. Every Thursday. Preacher said she never misses. She goes out soul winning. I said, explain that to me. She can't talk. She'd scare anybody that she tried to witness to. He said, she sits over there in the passenger seat and the preacher's wife drives a car and she sits over and prays the whole time and, and points, Just pull in here. She said the Holy Ghost tells her where to, where to stop and, and she'll say, pull in here or she'll point like that and they'll pull in there and go in there and witness them people. I thought, good night. It made me feel about that high like I want to crawl up under the pew somewhere. There is a woman that can't even talk going visiting every single week. What must I do to be a soul winner? Be available. Be ready. Be willing. I didn't say be educated. I didn't say be smart. I said be willing. Be willing. We'll stop right there tonight. I really didn't plan on preaching that long. The Lord gave me that little thought the other day running, and I gave it to you. What must I do? Let's stand by our head for prayer. Make sure he's on. God's speaking to your heart here tonight. Here's what I want us to do. It's still Mother's Day. Listen, I, I love to have a good time. Y'all know me. I love to cut up. I love to eat. I love to play ball. I love to, you know, spend time with the family and all that. But we've got a work to do. What must I do to be separated? Maybe some of you need to junk some old friend or some relationship or some activity that you had planned for this summer. I don't know. Maybe you're here tonight and you need to make some kind of step. Let's get in this altar tonight and say, Lord, what must I do? Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost of God, you'd get a hold of everybody's heart here tonight, including me. Lord, make, help me to be separate. Help me to be schooled. And help me to be a soul winner. Lord, I'm going to ask you right now to give me Holy Ghost power to be a witness and a soul winner this summer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Let's get in here and this Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention? Yeah, ma'am. I want to introduce to you in this corner yeah, ma of the good and the right. Hey, ma'am. Stands a champion robed in white. Come on now, come on, let's pray. Come on, let's get this all in heaven. Lord, make me a soul winner. Out Lord, make me a soul winner. Amen. His reach reaches everywhere. His age is evermore. Ask God to make you a soul winner. He is higher than the highest. Sure. He's greater than the great. No one could ever, ever take, take his crown away. He's more mighty than He's the mighty. more mighty than the mighty, yes. He reigns from above. Hey, man, come on now. He's the all-time undisputed, 
undefeated champion of love. He left my home. Say, Lord, make me a soul winner. Lord, make me a soul winner. Lord, make me a soul winner. Make me a bus worker. Lord, make me a bus witness for God. Make me a Sunday school teacher. Make me a witness. Make me a witness at work. God, help me. This king wore the crown as I watch a champion going down. Oh, but I will never count him out. For I am a witness of the day he rose to reclaim the title. Champion of love. He is higher than the highest. He's greater than the great, brother. He's greater than the great. No one can ever take his will ever take his crown away. He's more mighty than the mightiest. He reigns from above. He's the all-time undisputed, undefeated champion of love. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Leave here tonight and say, Lord, make me a soul winner. Make me a soul winner.